Um, good evening. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting of the San Mateo Park and Recreation Commission to order. Uh, would you all stand for, please for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, Giovanna, would you call the roll, please? I would be happy to, Chair Massey. Commissioner Walnick? Here. Commissioner Holm? Here. Commissioner Fields? Here. Vice Chair Held? Here. Chair Massey? Uh, here. Thank you, we do have a quorum for tonight's meeting. That's excellent. Okay, um, all right. Um, Due to our still being in remote status, uh, I'm going to go through uh, the technical side of this. Uh, due to the physical distancing protocols in place at this time, we continue to encourage public participation remotely. Information on how to provide public comment is explained at the top and bottom of the published agenda. There are two ways to participate. Join the Zoom meeting by clicking on the link at the top of the agenda use the raise your hand button to be called on at the appropriate time. Please unmute, unmute yourself only when called upon. Or phone in participation can be done by calling 408-638-0968 with the conference ID 867-5786. Pass code 315470, press star nine to raise your hand to be called on and star six to unmute. This, these options for public comment will remain available until I close the public comment period for each agenda item. Okay. Um, Next item on the agenda is the consent calendar, which tonight consists of approval of the regular meeting minutes uh, for our last meeting on February 2nd, 2022. Do we have any uh, suggested amendments to the minutes as presented to us? Okay, seeing none, I'd be looking for a motion to approve. Move to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, Giovanna, would you call the roll, please, for the vote? I would be happy to try, Nancy. Vice Chair Held? Yes. Commissioner Wolnick? Yes. Commissioner Holm? Yes. Commissioner Fields? Yes. Chair Massey? Yes. Thank you. Motion has passed. Good. Okay. Um, that's fine. Uh, Okay, at, um, hang on a sec. Okay, at this point in the meeting, we offer to any members of the public in attendance uh, the opportunity to uh, comment on any item not appearing on tonight's agenda. Uh, tonight's agenda consists of a review of the um, Central Park Playground up, uh, design development update, the Eastdale Hillsdale playground upgrade and the proposed parks and recreation fee schedule for fiscal year 2022-23. Um, do we have any uh, any members of the public uh, who may wish to comment? Do you want to see anybody? There are no raised hands at this time, Chairman. Oh, wait. I do have a member of the public. Okay, um, that's and, fine. Then I then I need to then I need to go through the rest of the of the blurb here. Uh, state law prevents. All right, members of the public wishing to comment on any item not appearing on the agenda may address the commission at this time. State law prevents the commission from taking action on any matter not on the agenda. Your comments may be referred to staff for follow up. 
Public comment is limited to a total of 15 minutes. However, an opportunity for additional public comment may be provided later in the agenda. Okay, so do we, um, we have someone who wishes to uh, offer us some comment? Yes, we have Annie Schulzman. Annie, if you could unmute. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. I think that um, it's premature for me to comment right now. So, um, you, you, you I, want I to have, comment. You want to comment on an item that's on the agenda. I, I think yes. I want to comment about the East Hillsdale Park. Yes, and and we'll I think I'm premature for that, aren't I? Yeah, you'll have an opportunity to do that when we get to that point in the agenda. Okay, sorry to get it wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. No, no, no problem. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sure. Um, Giovanna, do we have anybody else? I do not see any other hands raised, Chair Massey. Okay. Well, then I will close the um, the uh, this public comment period. And we will move to the first uh, item on uh, tonight's agenda under old business, uh, Central Park play area design development update. Um, and I understand we have a, uh, a representative of RRM design group who will give us a presentation on this. So um, thank you, Chair Massey, members of the commission. We're happy to welcome back Dina Chavez and uh, Marissa Peltier, who represent our design team from RRM. We last left this with the commission, I believe last October maybe, and we indicated that we would come back um, to the commission with some additional design development details, including um, some design development work around our restroom, proposed restroom and our picnic shelter. So with that, I will turn it over to Gina and Marissa. Great, thank you, Sheila. And thank you, Commission. Thank you for having us. So as Sheila said, we will give a very brief um, recap of the master, pla master plan process to date. We'll briefly go over the project site and the preferred concept. And then we will summarize the commission comments that we received back in September. And then we will look at where we're at in the design development phase today and look ahead at next steps. So this is the timeline that we showed you in September. Just a quick recap. We started in 2014 with the park-wide master plan process, worked very closely with the community throughout, and we achieved adoption in 2018. And in 2019, we started this first implementation phase of the playground renovation. And we've been working with the community over the last few years to get to the point where we're at right now, which is the design development process. Just a reminder of the site, it's about two acres in size. Um, one of our main charges from the beginning has been to preserve the existing tree canopy. And we have, we're working to do that currently. And then also um, keeping the existing train ride and interweaving picnic throughout and also replacing the restrooms with brand new facilities. So this is the preferred concept that we shared with you back in September. This is really the focal point of the play area and it's the, we're calling it the adventure village concept. So you can see the play towers, the tree houses, the mounds, the boardwalk. And this is really, this is in the tree clearing today where you have the existing structure, but it's bigger than what you have there today. And then this is the tot area, which we are calling the enchanted forest it has a variety of sensory play activities, imaginative experiences, and it's all within that existing tree canopy and centered around the magical ficus that the kids play on today um, with the, throughout all the existing roots on the ground. So this is a plan view of the preferred plan. Um, just to recap quickly, this is that central focal treehouse tower with the mounds coming off it and the boardwalk meandering throughout the tree canopy. And then adjacent to it, you have the enchanted tot area. And then to the right, we have a large group gathering, picnic gathering area. Down here, we have the swing zone, a zip line. And then the restroom today is down here and we're relocating it 
to this area of the park so that it can be shared with the adjacent amenities as well as the playground. And then of course the beloved existing train ride would remain as is on the left. So we heard a number of thoughtful comments back in September and here's a list of them. I won't read them all, but I just wanted to um, highlight the, the top ones are really more tangible, constructive comments that will show you how we are addressing them in the plan today. And then the last few are more detailed comments, which we will continue to work on throughout the design process, such as providing activities in the zip line queue, as well as um, varying the difficulty level of the treasure hunt. So I'll walk you through how we're addressing those, some of the comments above those. This is a snapshot of where we're at in the design development process. We are currently taking that preferred plan that you saw before and really refining the spaces and exploring different types of materials for the play experiences, for the structures, as well as for the different surfaces. Um, we have some colors on here to denote the different areas. Um, we're not we haven't made any final decisions on what those play surfaces will be, but the main thing that we need to keep in mind is that they have to be accessible and we have to balance that accessibility with the play value as well as safety. And then we're also working with our vendors and manufacturers on really bringing these play experiences um, and the structures like the restroom and the picnic shelter to life. And we'll show you where we're at in that process as well. So now just to go over some of the comments and how they're being addressed. Um, the, one of the comments we heard was to add transfer stations to the sand areas. We find, we, we heard that people would like to incorporate sand into the design. So we have it in a couple of small key locations and these red circles here show where we would have the transfer stations into that play zone. So we also heard that we should add some stair access to the boardwalk. Um, we have a number of accessible ramps going up to the boardwalk, but we wanted to highlight where we have those stair access points as well. So we added one down here. And then we also heard more slides. Everybody loves slides. So we did add some slides and we're highlighting where they're at in the plan. Um, we have a couple of them coming off of the boardwalk. We have two coming off the mound. We have one that goes inside of the mound and comes out on, underneath. And then we have um, a big one that's slightly bigger than it was before in the Enchanted Todd area. We also heard that we need to provide lots of bike parking as well as stroller parking. So the three circular areas um, show where we would have bike racks. And those are all outside the fenced play area, and that's on purpose. But then we showed the stroller parking with this oval red area down here, and that would be inside the gate because every, nobody wants to park their strollers outside of the gate. So bikes outside the fence and strollers inside. Oh, one more thing I wanted to point out on this slide is we heard that we needed to provide plenty of room on the paths and the boardwalk for two-way wheeled circulation. So for strollers, as well as wheelchairs. And we have done that. So all of our paths are wide enough for people to pass each other um, if you're using a stroller or a wheelchair. Another thing we heard was to make sure that our entry into the play area was safe. So previously we had a gated entry closer to El Camino and then we had one up here. So we consolidated both of those entry points to this location right here. It's further away from El Camino and it's inset into the play area a bit. And then we eliminated the one that would eventually interrupt the future location of the tennis courts. And we just kept this one down here. And then we also have some entries here and up here near the restroom. So we also heard that people would like to have seating um, in a way that they could view both play areas. So if they have smaller and older children. So this seemed like a logical place to do so. We added some variety of seating types in this area and we're exploring what those look like now. 
but you could um, easily see your children in the Tot area as well as the larger Adventure Village area. And as I mentioned before, we're currently working with a restroom manufacturer on really making the character of the restroom match the character of the park. We took some inspiration from the historic coal house pump, pump house and looked at having some um, roof lines that really mimicked that character and then pulled some of the more traditional materials from the park as well. So we're working on that process right now. Nothing set in stone, but um, they provided us some illustrations to show what that might look like. And then this is a close up of what the restroom layout might look like. Um, so in this plan right now, we're exploring having gender neutral units on either side of the building, both sides here, and then having a common wash area in the center. And then at those sinks, we would also have some smaller sinks for children to access. And then also we have these gates so that city staff could cl can close up the facility at night. One other um, request made by staff was that we provide magnetic locks on each of these units so that they can be automatically controlled independently so that you can choose to have just a certain number of units open at any one time. So this is a floor plan of what that restroom facility might look like with the gates on the outside, wash station in the center and the units on either side. And then we're also exploring a design of the large picnic gathering area. And this is just an inspirational character image. We, haven't, we don't have a rendering from them yet, but we're thinking that the roof line might take inspiration from the coal pump house as well and then some of the architectural detailing. So that's kind of a summary of where we're at. We're gonna to continue to work through the design development phase um, with city staff and with our manufacturers and vendors to make all of these elements start to come to life. And then the next step in the process would move on, would be to move on to construction documentation where we're really diving into the technical details of how to construct the design. And I'm gonna stop sharing now and turn it back over to Sheila or Chair Massey. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much. Um, do uh, any of the commissioners have questions um, on this? Anybody or? I do. Sure. Um, Gina, could you uh, go back to the, the <clears throat> layout of the park? Sure. Okay. Thanks. Um, sure. So I, I just am having a little trouble seeing it on the map. Could you just quickly run okay. your mouse along where the, where all the fences are? Yes, good question. So you have the existing fence along El Camino down here, but then we have a smaller low fence that wraps around the entire park that goes all the way around. We have a gate here and then comes up and then connects to the restroom. So the restroom is actually outside of the fenced area and we have a gate there so that it can be accessed from both sides of the park and then wraps around another gate into the enchanted tot area and then coming back up and around back in another gate here. And then this fence sort of wraps around the outside of the boardwalk and you have another gate here. So this group picnic area is outside of the fenced area. Okay, what is that? What's the line that goes along the pathway like outside the bathroom? What it um, like up? Yeah, that line right there. What's that black line there? So that's our limit of work. Ah, okay. Yeah, so it's a little bit more of a technical drawing from what you've seen last time. And this just helps us sort of denote the project limits. Okay, that's my only question. Thank you. Sure. Okay, um, anybody, any, any other commissioners questions?
Eric, uh, Sarah, or Lindsay, any any questions for? Uh... Yes, <clears throat> I, have, I have a question. Sure. I have, I have two actually. So um, on the bathroom development, I like that they're all uh, unisex family bathrooms. Uh, are you intending to put changing tables in all of them? And if so, because it looks like you've got your accessible wheel radius really tight, you may need to enlarge them a little bit. Yeah, so I believe we are putting um, a changing station in each unit and they fold up against the wall. So that provides you a little bit of extra room, but we'll make sure that we have enough accessibility for a wheelchair to have the turnaround access in there. Okay. And um, the other thing that I would strongly encourage is um, if there's enough room to also have in the corner, they make child seats that um, because every time I take my uh, little one to the bathroom in a park, I take the opportunity to go to the bathroom myself and then I'm yelling at her to get off the floor um, <laughs> and not touch everything. And it'd be really good to have something where a parent can can use the facilities and put their kid in a in a in those corner child seats. Yeah, I think that's an excellent idea. We'll definitely explore that. I remember those days. Don't touch anything. Yes. <laughs> Hold your hands. Yeah, I um, think that'd be great. And, and um, along those lines, giving parents, because this is sort of designed for parents to be using it, enough space for maybe a little shelf, <clears throat> a little shelf, something beyond the, the coat hook things, because you're, if you're bringing a little one with a diaper bag, various other things, um, it would be nice if there was some places to, to put things. Um, because I've, I've, even using the changing tables, you, you want to get your diapers out ahead of time and all of that kind of business. Yeah. Um, then back to the, the actual design of the, the park itself. One of the comments I had before that I'm sorry if, I, if you covered this and I missed it was um, the, the adventure boardwalk, the, the raised access to it. Um, it seems like the, the, um, the ramping up to it where you're essentially your, your wheelchair ramp to get onto it needs a, a switch back in it or something to keep uh, kids from biking up it. Yes, we are exploring that detail. Okay. How, so it's a, it's a bit of a challenge because we want to make sure we're providing the access for wheelchairs to sure, sure. Walk and at the same time discourage bicycles. So we just need to think a little bit more on that and see what we can do. Yeah, I think, um, you know, if you can, if you put in a pinch point that a wheelchair can pass through, but just makes it harder for a bike or, or something to, to help just keep that from being, becoming a, a really fun ramp for, for bikes to go up and down. Otherwise, I, I like it. I like the added, the added slides and, and the improvements you made, and I appreciate the work you've done. Thank you. I can just give one other quick comment. I love the coal pump house. I love that you're bringing that historical element into this. I think it looks looks great. Thank you. Uh, okay, Sarah or Lindsay, any questions? Okay. Um, well then, uh, okay then we will. Um, Move to the uh, to the pub open the public comment period for this agenda item. Now, tonight we have three public hearing items on our agenda, which is a, a, a more lengthy agenda than uh, we have oftentimes. So for tonight, um, as we approach each item, we're going to ask for a show of hands. For, uh, to see uh, how many people uh, are interested in uh, offering public comment on that item. Uh, and depending on the number of speakers, uh, we may um, have a time limit on uh, comments. Um, and in any event, given the length of tonight's agenda, uh, we would ask uh, those offering comments to be uh, relatively brief. Um, Okay, uh, so Giovanna, if you could ask for a show of hands, uh, 
as to whether uh, and how many uh, people we have offering public comment on this agenda item. Thank you, Chair Massey. Attendees, if you're interested in providing public comment for the Central Park Playground renovation, if you could please raise your hand at this time. Chair Massey, I do not see any hands raised. Oh, the one just came on. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, well, that's fine. Uh, then let's let's go ahead and, and take that individual's public comment. Um, and again, we're 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 asking. We're not going to have a time limit, but we're asking that commenters this evening be be relatively brief. Thank you, Drew. If you can please unmute yourself. Good evening, uh, commissioners, staff, and consultants. So I was really expecting a lot more people to comment. So sorry for the delayed hand. I thought there was gonna be a lot more. Um, so a couple couple items. Uh, I've been do, kind of following this for a while. Um, I think if there's so many great things about this design. I won't go through all that, um, but I do think there's a lot of amazingly great things on this. I would ask, uh, got two, two bits of feedback. One is when these views are being shown, if there could be a slide, so to speak, that shows the tree canopy. I think in past presentations, there was one where it showed, it overlaid the current tree canopy with the design underneath it, which you wouldn't see a lot of the design underneath it. I, I realize why normally that's not shown, but it'd be great to just see like one slide, so to speak, of from the air looking down, so to speak. So that's just a slot, something. Um, the other item is more, um, I don't mean this to come off strongly, but I, I was really surprised on the list of feedback. There wasn't something about inclusivity or other cultures. I distinctly remember uh, some public comment. I myself did this, but also commissioner to mention this where it's like the adventure theme overall, totally cool. But culturally, what is that across different cultures? And how could we incorporate some of that into it? I don't mean spending a million dollars on something else, but like Chinese, red is an important color, or there are symbols and stuff in Hispanic culture, Latino culture. Um, and we have some Japanese there and stuff. And so it's like how that wasn't listed as one of the feedback things. And so I was kind of, I was, disappointed by that and then it's like how given the general plan about diversity inclusivity is a goal in the city and I don't I don't have any set thing what that will look like I just think conceptually is just within the adventure theme other cultures and for some ideas and I'm not I don't mean redesign when I say this by any means it's just little things that can populate this to make it other stuff. So hopefully, thank you. I'll shut up before I ramble more. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, okay. Uh, do we, Giovanna, do we have anyone else? I do not see any other hands raised at this time, Chair Massey. Okay. Then I will close the public comment period and bring this back to the commission for comments. Um, Eric, I'm, I'm, see, I'm seeing you here, so let's start with you. I think I've said all my other comments, except um, I appreciate uh, the comment from Drew about the tree canopy, because I forgot that that was one of my comments last time as well, um, because the trees are of, of concern there. So thank you, Drew, for, for bringing that up. We, it is really faint in there, but it, it, we really need to see it much more pronounced, maybe as a separate slide or something. Um, and just to address the other public comment from you, I'm, I'm less concerned about the cultural nature of things. I think it can just it can just be what it is. Um, that that doesn't. Um, I don't. I really have an opinion one way or the other on it. But I, otherwise, I like the design, and I think it's. Uh, I'm real excited about it. Okay, um, Heather. Sure. Um, I really like the direction this is going. Um, I think it's it's been a great effort. 
I also agree. I love the pulling in the pump house design for the bathroom. I think that's really creative way also to, to kind of hit the other um, theme that we had kind of discussed in the very beginning of all this. Um, I, I, I was the one who seconded the cultural diversity thing um, and I, I still second it. I do see a picture um, in the corner there on your slide about like it was a, it's a big bird with a carriage. Um, I had mentioned maybe the statues could be of a different non-European, non-Western European lineage, or maybe you had talked about um, continuing to work through the scavenger hunt, treasure hunt idea, you know, like little pictures throughout the park. Maybe that's something that could pull that in. So I think there's little, little ways we could um, diversify it a little bit. And I, I, I would be supportive of that. Um, I, I don't really share the concern about bikes on the ramp. Um, I think that the bike racks outside the gate is going to be one of the biggest deterrents we have. Um, but I, you know, I, I don't feel strongly one way or the other on whether we need a switch back or, or something like that, that I'm not going to object to that. I just, I don't really uh, strongly support that, I guess. And then, uh, um, I've never, um, I guess, I'll, I'll just say it. I, I'm not, I don't love the fencing around it. I'm probably outvoted. I think a lot of parents did say they wanted that. I do appreciate the fact that the fence doesn't divide the playground so that the kids can freely move back and forth. But I, I, don't, I don't really see a huge need for a fence, especially on the side of the playground that goes into the rest of the park. Um, but uh, I'll happily be outvoted for, on that one. Um, I just wanted to, to put that out there. That's it for me. Okay. Um, Sarah? Uh, yeah, I, I think that this is a great design. Um, I really, I think in, in so many ways, it really reflects the spirit of inclusion, both around ability that, you know, all the restrooms are accessible, but also that the playground is accessible in a really, um, you know, sort of thoughtful and creative way. Um, and I guess I, I just would say I'm, a, I'm concerned about a switchback kind of decreasing the accessibility. Um, so I, I'm not totally clear on what the bike issue is there, but um, I would just want to hold that in balance. Um, I also, I'll just say it, I appreciate that the restrooms are all gender neutral. I think that's the right move. It's also, um, you know, a nod to inclusion. Um, it's helpful for everyone. Um, Good job. Um, <laughs> um, I'll also just say, you know, the there are, are sort of nods to different cultures across the park, um, but I, I understand the concern and to whatever extent it's possible um, to, to continue to incorporate, you know, the diversity of San Mateo. Um, you know, obviously we have the, the Japanese tea garden on the other side of the park, um, which is a nod of course to our sister city. Um, but if there are ways of being more culturally inclusive within this project, um, I'm all for it. Um, I'll, I'll also just say to, to Commissioner Wolnick's point, um, if there's a real sort of practical reason for the fence, I'm for it, but um, I'm open to hearing pros and cons. Um, it's also a fence within a fence, so I'm not sure, um, but certainly there, there could be good reason for it. I'm sure it's, there's a, there's a great explanation. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just leave it there. Okay. Uh, Lindsay. Yeah, I think this is a really thoughtful design and appreciate you guys incorporating feedback from lots of different stakeholders and in, in pulling this together. Um, nothing big. I think commissioner will next idea for maybe incorporating kind of more diver diverse culture through the, uh, Treasure hunt, I think that makes more sense. It seems pretty practical and might be an easier lift to do. I actually am in favor of the fence. I too often have kids who go out sprinting and running. And I think uh, just the parental peace of mind of knowing that you're within arm's reach and they can't totally get away and run out to El Camino, I, I find reassuring. So as long as it's, I expect it's probably a lower fence. I'd be curious actually how high it is. So as long as it's not overwhelming, I, I actually think it's practical and makes a lot of sense. That's it. Okay, well, I will join my, my fellow commissioners in uh, uh, 
thanking our, our consultants for the progress that they've made. I also like the, the design and, and the way that it's shaping up very much. Uh, I thought the designs for the, the two buildings, the picnic shelter and the restroom, uh, fit nicely within the park. I think uh, the, the idea of keying off of this, the, uh, the coal pump house uh, was a good one and allowed, has clearly allowed you uh, a, a fair degree of design freedom uh, while nonetheless uh, harmonizing with the overall theme of the park. Uh, I think having these restrooms, and I, I guess I'm just going to confirm this for my, for my own uh, understanding, if nothing else, that uh, all of these restrooms are basically going to be uh, handicap accessible restrooms, uh, which I think is really a very, very good thing. Um, I know there's, I'm seeing there's some difference of opinion on some of the issues. Um, as far as cultural diversity, I think we should be mindful of that. I, uh, just listening to uh, both uh, the public comment and the views of the, that we all have expressed, I think there are a number of ways of getting there. Um, I just, I think we should be mindful of this and uh, make, uh, strive to incorporate that uh, to the extent we can without uh, redesigning everything. Um, I'm sort of on the fence about the fence. Um, I think that uh, certainly on the El Camino side, I think the risk of children running in the wrong direction is, is such that uh, there, there probably should be a fence there. Uh, I, I think I would just respect the difference of opinion, differences of opinion as far as the uh, part of the uh, play area that's facing inward uh, as to whether a fence is really required there or not. Um, but I, uh, overall, overall, I think we're, we're headed in a really, a really nice, uh, really fine direction. And I guess. The one, the one question I would ask at this, at this stage, only because it hasn't really been touched on, is what, our, uh, what the timetable is for, for finalizing the design and putting us in a position where uh, we could have construction start. And maybe our, our consultant could uh, just speak briefly to that. Sheila, did you want to start? I saw you <laughs> muted. <laughs> I did. Um, so I think we wanted to, um, before we went any further, particularly on the buildings, I think the commission has seen in general the playground design before. So I think we felt pretty good about the direction that we were going in. We wanted to get your consensus around the building design because obviously that's an important part of the next phase of the construction document. Uh, we will be going to council in March with the second phase of the contract for RRM, which will, um, get them going on the construction document um, at this point. Um, so I don't know the specific timetable in terms of how long RRM thinks that they will take in putting those construction documents together. Um, but I think, um, I think that we are well on our way um, in terms of um, having the real major pieces in place um, so that we can move forward. Um, I just wanna make a couple comments um, the fencing around the playground was something that we heard pretty strongly in the public feedback groups that we had when we did the playground designs on site. Um, we heard a lot about really two things, accessibility and fencing. Um, and I think Gina or Melissa, Marissa, if you can correct me, I think we're talking about a three foot high fence or a three and a half, it's not an imposing fence. Um, Hopefully they will come up with a design that will again kind of keep the character of maybe picking up some elements of the coal fence without repurposing um, the coal fence um, all over again. But we did hear a lot of public comment about the fencing all the way around. So I realize that not everyone agrees. Um, I think that we always try to go with what we hear from the consensus of the community 
Um, and I think that we heard pretty strongly that they would like a fence around the playground, which is why we had included um, it. Um, and then just lastly on the cultural elements, um, this project will require um, public art to be a part of it, apart from the actual playground design itself. And so I think there's opportunities um, both within the playground design and potentially within the public art um, that will have to be installed either in this area or in the park um, to try and um, address those concerns. So I realize that we're not at that specific design stage yet. So um, we hopefully will um, be able to get there, but I did want to just um, let you all know that because of the um, the size of this project that it will require some public art. Um, and so I think that's another opportunity to try to be um, attentive to the cultural diversity element. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, okay, um, then I would like to have us move on to uh, this, the second item on tonight's agenda. And that is the uh, East Hillsdale Playground Upgrade um, and I understand that um, uh, we will have a staff presentation on this. I'm sorry, Chair Massey, before you move on, I did see Commissioner Holm with his hand up oh, at sorry. the conclusion of my remarks, and I didn't know if you had anything additional to add. I, I, I had one thought since, since uh, Commissioner Walnick brought up the fence after I spoke. I was going to say I'm, I'm generally against fences in all shapes and forms, but um, Given the, the multiple different functions that are at this park adjacent to the playground, um, <clears throat> even though technically dogs are supposed to be off leash, I think every time I've enjoyed sitting in the park, someone has got their dog off leash. Um, and it's probably not a bad thing to have a fence, uh, both to keep the kids from running, but also just to have some protection for the kids that um, are running around screaming and having a great time for the errant dog that is not being controlled by their owner. So I generally hate fences, but would, would see a fence being a probably good thing here. Okay, any, any, other, any other comment, final comments before we move on? Okay, hearing none, um, then I would have us uh, uh, move on to the, uh, East Hillsdale Playground update, upgrade rather uh, under the new business rubric. And I understand there's a staff presentation on this. So at this point, um, I'll ask um, our business manager, um, Nicholas Jarvis and our park planning administrator, Dennis Frank, um, to give a brief presentation on uh, where we are with the East Hillsdale Park and Playground upgrade. Commissioners and members of the public, good evening. My name is Nicholas and I will share screen for this presentation. Okay. Um, so what I'd like to start off with is, um, and just bear with me a second. So, um, this presentation is about um, East Hillsdale Park and where it is today and the journey that we've taken to, um, to arrive at our recommendation for the new playground uh, design that we are submitting to the, to the commission. Um, I'll start off with some pictures of East Hillsdale Park as it is today. As you can see, we have pictures here of the existing playground equipment. Um, there's a picture here of the swing set and the play structures. Um, I should note that these, uh, this park has not had a renovation for many decades. And as such, it has been highlighted as a park that needs to be um, updated. Um, parts and equipment for the playground equipment that is there, replacement parts and the like are very, very hard to find. The equipment that is there, um, can be considered uh, dangerous and is also does not cater for kids of all abilities, children of all abilities. And as such, um, the, the department 
put forth that this should be a park that should be renovated. Um, as such, we kicked off with a community survey in 2020. We sent out approximately a thousand mailers to households um, within a half mile radius of the park. We received 94 responses in doing so. Um, and the questions that were asked were um, for residents to comment on the preferred location of the play area within the park below, um, to speak to whether they would like a separate play area for older kids or younger kids. And we also discussed the elements, play elements that are there now and whether they should be retained. Um, once the responses were tabled, um, we had a, an identified preferred location of the play area. We knew that there was a preference for the um, play areas between older kids and younger kids to be separate. And we wanted to replace some of the uh, play elements whilst keeping the spirit and the, um, the look similar to what was there to begin with. In October 2021, um, we reached out again to the community through a, a virtual community meeting. And with the information that we had in mind, we presented several um, play options. We focused on play area improvements and we included small group picnic areas, um, shade structures and the like, again, from the feedback that we received from the um, initial survey. Um, at that meeting, the general consens um, consensus was that the options that we presented were over-designed for a small park and that um, it was great that we were looking at the park, however, the, the playground in particular. However, we weren't, um, we hadn't focused on things such as the park upgrades um, consisting of the pathway, the tree canopy, irrigation and other improvements that the park um, needed and, and still needs. So as such, we were asked to come back with um, more thought into the designs and also a holistic view as to what the park needs instead of just focusing on the playground. So again, um, in gen January um, 22nd of this year, we did in-person outreach and Again, we came back with a less is more um, I, uh, designs in mind for the park. We did three presentations um, and the design representatives came to the park to actually speak to those designs and their merits. We addressed more than the playground. We had an arborist on hand to speak to the tree plan. We had done some um, preliminary discussions as to the, the drainage of the park because some residents um, said that the park's drainage was inadequate during heavy rains. We also looked at the um, walking path, which is also something that um, residents told us gets a lot of use every day. And as well as that, um, a consensus again, which was also um, voiced in the first round of community outreach, was that to have no restrooms in the um, park. So therefore, the designs that we um, presented didn't include restrooms. So um, as a result, um, I'd like to, uh, next, I'd like to present the, um, the site plan. And at this point, I would like to hand over to Dennis Frank, who will take over and speak to the actual site plan and the designs that were presented. Uh, thank, thank you, Nicholas. Um, now, I don't have the PowerPoint in front of me, but uh, if you can get that back up there, that would help. And if you can, I don't have access to moving the cursor around either. But um, I can explain uh, this, this sheet here, just kind of to orient you on the on the left is the north side of the park, which is closest to 31st. The right is the south side of the park, closest to Louise Lane. You can see the existing tennis court on the south side of the park. Um, the adjacent neighborhood to the east is on the top of the sheet where Hickory Lane is. Uh, the neighborhood to the west is at the bottom of the sheet. Uh, 
uh, and uh, there is an existing perimeter pathway that surrounds the existing turf area uh, that goes quite all the way around the park. And uh, it, there's also a bisecting pathway in the middle of the park, which uh, goes leads from Briar Lane to um, Hickory Lane. The proposed lawn area is shown in light green. Um, the yellowish green area is where the play areas are now proposed, which will be surfaced with an accessible safety surfacing, showed in kind of a yellowish green. Uh, there is also a small sand uh, play area uh, adjacent to the two to five play area shown in beige on the east side of the uh, uh, lawn area. Uh, the play area improvement footprint has been substantially reduced since the meeting in uh, October by almost uh, 45% uh, from more than 13,500 square feet to about 7,500 square feet. Therefore, more of the existing lawn is being preserved. The northernmost uh, play area is for swings, uh, which is about 3,000 square feet. The southernmost uh, play area uh, where the, is where the other play elements are located, play structures, et cetera. Uh, and that is about 3,800 square feet. The southernmost play area is also divided into two areas. There is a, a two to five age group play area on the east side. And there is a five to 12 uh, group, age group play area on the uh, west side. Uh, there is also a 450 square foot area for two picnic tables uh, that we have located in close proximity to, to uh, both age groups of the play area, kind of in the middle. Uh, this was the only change made to the site plan the, the, since the meeting in January was, was of those two picnic tables. Um, so that's the plan. Uh, I guess we go to the next slide. Uh, there are three play area options that were presented in the meeting in February. This one is from, um, uh, represents Berliner, Lapset, Whole Trees, the play equipment proposal. There's a total of, uh, regarding the older kids play area, which is shown kind of on the left here, on the right rather, that there's a total of um, five structures that appear to be laid out in a manner that offers linked play experiences. The most prominent components being the Berliner cube uh, structure uh, with a cable net structure, which contains a uh, cable net structure, the Berliner peak cable net structure, which, which is located where the slide is kind of to the right, a little bit further to the right there. Uh, that, okay. Um, you, you point and I'll tell you what, what you're pointing to. That is a, a monkey bar that is by whole trees. Uh, to the right, to the right, left of that is, is the, um, the Berliner cable net structure, which contains a clubhouse play structure and also leads to a six to seven foot high straight slide. Uh, there is a grove of uh, tree-like structures to the, to the far right, to the far right of the play area, which is uh, uh, climbing elements uh, for nature play, as well as some horizontal uh, log type structures from whole trees for climbing as well and exploring. That's the, uh, basically the, the uh, play area for the two to to uh, the older kids play area. 
the top play area, there's three main structures also offering linked play experience. They include the whole trees uh, log balance beam right there, right there, which leads to uh, monkey bars that are scaled down for tots, which then leads to um, a lap set ferry burrow with steps leading to a three foot high platform with a natural looking roof. And from the deck, uh, there is a straight slide. Uh, the height of the, that structure is 13 feet to the top of the roof. In terms of the tot independent play components, there is a whole tree maze, uh, which is kind of in the far corner back there. You can hardly see it. Um, there is a lap, lap set playhouse and facade structures uh, right there. And uh, a, a seesaw type of rocker called a grasshopper, which is located kind of in the middle, right there, great. Um, for the swing area, for the elementary or the older kids area, there is a one six foot nine high swing bay, or rather there, there I mean, for the younger kids area, there is a, uh, a six foot nine high swing bay with two tot seats. And for the older kids swing area, there is uh, two bays of swing with four belt seats. Um, that is the Berliner lap set option. Uh, we can go to the next slide, which I think is the, that's more information on the, this is the Hague's option. Um, again, the tot structure is in the is in the background there, along with a teeter totter, uh, which uh, actually rotates while it, you teeter on it. And the elementary age play structure, or the older kids play structure, is in the foreground. And to the right of that play structure is. Um, a, a merry-go-round, about a seven foot high merry-go-round spinner. Uh, the components of the older kids play structure, there's about 11 components on that, that this, uh, the older kids play structure. The most prominent component being the five foot high straight slide, which, can't, which you see down in the uh, slide down below. Um, the horizontal ladder, uh, which you hardly can see on any of the slides, uh, but um, there is five, al also uh, five different types of climbers. There is an overhead rings. There's two sliding poles. There's a tornado spinner, which is located on the right side there, or left side rather. Um, and there is a counter underneath the five foot high deck. You can probably see that on the lower slide. Yeah, down below the deck, there's a yellow counter there. The tallest deck is five foot. The play structure post decking and side panels are made of Nordic pine. This is the same wood that is installed in the interior of the tower play structure at Beresford Park and also was used on the tot structure. Uh, we have Hague's equipment at uh, Casanova Park, and I think we have it at Parkside Aquatic Park. The main stairway to the top deck is equipped with a transfer platform, as you can see on the right side of the structure there. Uh, the, in terms of the swing area, well, yeah, the swing area, the um, older kids consists of a uh, two bays 
of seven foot high by 12 foot six long swing bays with two rigid seats and two inclusive seats. Uh, going back to the, oh, I might as well deal with the, with the potch swing area, which basically con consists of uh, three tot seats and one um, seat that's called a tango sheet seat, which is the black one there, that is shared where an adult could swing face to face with a tot. Going back to the tot, Play structure. Can you go back to the top play structure? Yeah. Um, the main top play structure is the same as the Hague structure that was presented in the October meeting. The most prominent components being a four foot high wave slide gridded net, uh, which is, you can barely see it. Uh, no, I, I, I'm talking about, oh yeah, the top, yeah, the gridded net. Um, and several cognitive panels uh, and thematical play components for imaginary play that are found throughout the structure. The height of the structure is 11 foot three to the tallest roof. In addition to the transfer platform, there is also a wheelchair access ramp that leads to the low platform about one foot off, high off the ground. This is the only place structure that offers a, a platform like that, or a ramp like that. So that's basically what the um, Hague's feature calls. I want to go to the next slide, I can explain the landscape structures uh, the tot structure is to the left and the elementary age structure is to the right. The elementary age structure is called the crab trap. Uh, you can see the most prominent components being a very a variety of challenging climbing elements within it. There is a six foot high semi-curved alpine slide coming down through the middle of the structure. Uh, and there is some, a rubber belting uh, for moving through the structure from the main entry to the middle of the structure to the slide. The height of the top structure of, of, the, uh, of that, that structure is 10 feet to the roof. Uh, the tallest part is the access, uh, is the access building, part of the access building is six foot eight off the ground. The place structure frame and the climbing cables are made of steel and the slide is made of rotationally molded polyethylene. The main access belting is accessible via the transfer platform step to enable inclusivity. Uh, the other independent components on this include a 20 inch diameter stand-up spinner and a two foot eight diameter whirly Q spinner you see between the two equipment. Uh, the swings, there is, uh, well, I'll, 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 I'll describe the play structure since we're on, on the play structure here. Uh, the top play structure, the most prominent uh, component being the spiral slide from a 56 inch high deck, a double slide from a 40 inch high deck, and four different types of climbers. Um, there's a storefront panel below uh, the 48 inch high deck and a driver panel on the 48 inch high deck. The height of the top structure is eight foot six to the tallest support. There is no roof and there is a transfer platform that connects the uh, steps leading to the deck for inclusivity. In terms of the swings, um, for the older kids, <clears throat> there is a two eight inch high, eight foot high uh, swing bays with one face to face friendship swing as similar to the one I pointed out in Hague in the Hague's. And there is uh, 
or two, and in and in one bay, and, and in the other bay, there is a belt suite seat and a bucket seat with a harness uh, in the other bay. The uh, for the tot swings, there is a the set, uh, there is a two foot two uh, eight foot high bays with four tot bucket swings. And that concludes the presentation. Okay, uh, thank you very much for, for the, the presentation. Uh, I think that was very comprehensive and, and laid out uh, the, the options uh, for us. Um, so at this point, uh, I'd open this up to uh, questions from the commission. Um, Sorry. Commissioner Massey, um, could I speak to the um, voting that we received after the presentation? Absolutely. Yeah, I didn't realize you weren't done. Oh, okay. Sure. That's okay. No problem. So um, on the day of the um, in-person um, community meeting that we had, we the three presenters that were there basically had their um, presentation boards. And on the day, we handed out stickers to the public. Um, we had about um, over 60 people that um, attended on that day, which was a wonderful turnout for an in-person uh, meeting, considering the pandemic and everything else that is going on. Um, and on that day, we handed out the um, stickers um, and we handed out blue dots to the children and the other colored dots that we had for the parents. And as a result, the voting that we got was that we had... Um, 30 votes overall for spec play, um, which was um, consisting of 24 adults and six children. We had 27 for the HAGS um, choice, which was um, 14, I believe, um, adults and 13 children. And then we had um, eight votes for Ross, consisting of six adults and two children. So the overall preference for the children for the playground area seems to have been um, way towards the HAGS equipment with 13 votes versus um, six for spec play and two for Ross. Um, so based on that consensus, um, we made the recommendation because overall the difference between um, the overall number of votes wasn't that great, and the children being the ultimate beneficiaries and users of the playground um, once installed. Um, as well as that, as we mentioned in the um, administrative report, there was also a considerable saving um, with um, uh, the HAGS product as well that we couldn't ignore. And at this point, the presentation concludes. Okay, well, once again, th thank you both very much uh, for your informative presentation. Um, and at this point, I would throw this open to um, questions from the commission. Um, well, let's sort of go the other way this time uh, and start with uh, Lindsay. Questions? I think just one, I know the kids voted for this more so, did they, they provide more details as to why really, Nicholas, or was it just? Um, they, they did not, we didn't. Um, we okay. basically, the voting was only um, giving them, giving people um, dots. Um, the presenters um, went through a detailed presentation of the merits of each of the design. So we felt that the votes once received were um, uh, informed, if not educated, as to why they chose that particular design compared to the others. Terrific, thank you, that's all. Okay, um, Sarah, questions? Yeah, I was um, surprised that the community feedback said no interest in a restroom, um, because I think so often I hear that people want restrooms in parks, in fact, Oftentimes when I meet with, with individuals, friends, people I'm interacting with for whatever reason in San Mateo, they'll say, I would love for there to be more restrooms in our parks. So um, I would love for one of you to comment on if you've got some framing around that, um, 
particularly I'd say, given that there's a tennis court in the park, um, that seems like an amenity that people would want. I and mean, then maybe it's, I don't know why. I, I was just, I was really surprised by that. Um, other than that, I think the designs are very good. Um, I'm happy with the way this looks. Um, so that's one question about the restrooms. And then I have another question, which is, um, I couldn't tell from the renderings, um, are we keeping the grass in the park or is that turf? Um, and if we're keeping the grass, I'm curious about, um, I, I mean, it just feels like grass is a, a huge wa uh, water consumer. And um, are there any kind of considerations around water usage and this park um, sure. renovation? So, Commissioner Fields, I'll, I'll ask, uh, sorry, I'll answer the question about the restrooms to begin with to, as, a, as, a, as a first point. Um, in 2020, when we reached out to the public with our survey, we didn't actually ask um, about a restroom at that time. However, we did have a free form um, space in the survey. And within that survey, within that free form, we received the first um, instances of um, responders basically saying that they didn't want a restroom um, to be built. Um, of course, that didn't shape our, um, that didn't shape our um, decision in any way. And then when we went back to the community uh, through the virtual meeting and again through the, um, through the uh, in-person meeting, in all three occasions, there was a consensus for no restrooms. So that's, um, uh, that's basically what has um, made us not include one um, in, the, in the design that we have submitted. Can I just, um, sorry, is that because most people who go to this park live close by, so they're just going to the bathroom at home? The, the park is frequented um, a great deal by people that live in that area. Okay. So therefore, that, that might be the reason why they, they didn't. And as well as that, um, I probably should also mention that, once again, that we reached out to people within a half a mile radius. Okay. Um, so, because we wanted to hear from that immediate community. So therefore, for the people that live within a half a mile radius, you know, quite likely maybe the, um, the, the you know, the presence of a restroom was not, uh, was not essential for them. Okay. Um, Dennis, if you could speak to the um, grass um, versus turf and um, uh, component of the park, please. Or Sheila. Yeah, I mean, I can speak to that. I think that um, just two things. One is I do want to um, just reemphasize, I think, the response that Nicholas gave, and that is we did hear pretty strongly um, that this is very much a neighborhood park um, and that they were concerned that once you start putting in a restroom, it begins to feel as though um, it may draw folks from outside the neighborhood who may want to stay longer. Um, I think our overall, you know, sort of philosophy around restrooms is obviously around um, community parks and parks where we have athletic fields where people might be there for several hours. We absolutely um, put restrooms in those areas. Um, I think when it gets to some of these neighborhood parks, similar to what we heard when we did the design for Burrell Park, which is also considered a, a neighborhood park, there was very strong consensus around not putting in a restroom. So. I realize that there's pros and cons both ways, but I do think that in this case, um, we are, we very much heard from the neighborhood and perhaps some of the folks who um, uh, speak under public comment may want to, um, uh, to reemphasize that as well. I think we also heard that there, yes, I think we understand that there, um, that turf is um, not the most water efficient um, use of, um, of area. Um, I think that there is some question about how can we improve the irrigation in this park overall. I think we did hear some concerns from the neighbors about that. Um, but I think we also heard that this is an area where kids like to run. Um, and so being able to provide a larger area for them to be able to use to, you know, run or, you know, throw a Frisbee or a football or whatever, um, I, I hear the concerns about water usage. I'm also sensitive to the fact that um, green space and open space for many of these neighborhoods um, is very much um, cherished. And 
the opportunity to take your family down to a park and do those kinds of activities um, is very much looked upon favorably. Thank you. Okay, um, Heather? Sure, uh, my first question is about the swing orientation. It looked like in one of the product options, the swings were facing each other. The other two, they were facing out. And I'm just wondering if that is necessary on the first product, I forget what it is, spec play. If that's necessary for the, the product or is that just how it was drawn in this rendering? So I, I, I think that um, what we did hear um, from many of the neighbors um, at the community meeting was that swings are really important. Um, I can't speak specifically for each of the vendors, but I think that there are swing options that I think each of the manufacturers said that they could um, you know, design to. Um, and so if there was a preference for you know, single swings versus the tandem swings or whatever, I, my sense was that all of these representatives felt that they could provide a variety of swing options depending upon the desire of the community. Yeah, I was actually talking about the banks facing each other. This is the only product that had the two sets oh. of swings facing each other. And I'm just wondering if that was just this rendering or whether this particular product could also be next to each other. I, I can't speak to that other than if we, we would have to take a look at um, the area that's been defined for the swings. Um, there are some um, fall zone requirements that we have to honor from a safety perspective about how far apart swing areas can be from each other. Um, but I'm not clear as to the specifics as to why it was designed this way. Okay, thank you. I think we uh, can take a look at that issue if, if you're interested do you have a preference or I, I do I was going to save it for comments but I'll just say it um I I think the the them next to each other I think swinging when you have a wider view of the park is just a really great experience when you're a kid and having them kind of face each other um I I feel is a bit awkward so I, I, my preference would be that we would pick a product that they didn't have to face each other but um, I don't know I suspect, how to find this. I areas. suspect that they can be re rotated, but we'd have to double check because they don't look like they're any, they're, they're significantly different from the other swings. Right. Okay. Um, my other question is about the, uh, the HAGS products. Um, again, it's just kind of a question of, is it just a rendering or um, I'm assuming for kind of the neon green and all the different colors that there's different color options for all of the equipment. Yes. yes okay. Yep, okay. That's it for my questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Eric. Um, of the students that were surveyed or the students, the, the kids, what was the age ranges of those? Was it all young kids, middle, middle school kids? What was that? Um, they were, um, they were younger kids. Um, I guess they would be under 12. Um, it was a Saturday morning, so it was the kids that were basically brought along by their parents. I think the, um, the older kids would have um, been doing their own thing on a, a Saturday morning. But from, from memory, we are talking, um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite confident that the children that were there were basically the uh, target audience for the 2 to 12 um, age groups that we have here represented in the, um, in the play options. Okay. Um, the the Ross play structure, I think, was the last one you did, right? Yep. Um, that was not uh, included in the packet, right? Oh. Okay. My uh, I, the the reason um, the reason being um, commissioner was because it was the least preferred um, of the community. So my apologies. I should have uh, I should have included it when I prepared the package. Okay. Um, I think uh, I I think in the um, you know there's there's benefits of each of each of the different ones and was there 
um, was there a discussion of of either features across one, you know, the Ross or the Hag or the um, whatever the first one is um, that were like, you know, what do you like from this feature and that? Because I know a lot of these are sort of interchangeable pieces or parts that could potentially be incorporated in one or the other. So the um, I should note that the when we went to the to when we had the virtual meeting, I believe we presented seven different options. Um, so we presented a a very large variety of um, different options, which I have some that I can share with you if you like. If you like to see some of the different options that we presented to the um, to the community, um, and in doing so, what we what we heard was that the more um, they, if we, if we, if, but less is more basically, once again, and as Sheila said, that if we, you know, that this, um, the community said to us that time, and I quote that this was not to be, this was not another Beresford. So they didn't want a, um, a very, a plethora of options and designs and um, embellishments for the park. They preferred to keep it very much to the style that it was. And with that brief, we went back with a simpler um, set of options as opposed to a, you know, a multitude of different um, structures and ideas and designs. And again, Commissioner, I've got some of the um, designs that unfortunately didn't make the cut. If you would like to see some of those, just so you can see the, the, the difference in the designs that we presented. Uh, I think that's okay. I mean, we're kind of narrowed down to where the public um, their preferences. Now, what what um, of the survey? There was it was interesting how there were the kids that preferred the the hag one, but the um, the adults were strongly in favor of the the spec play. What was there feedback from the adults as to why why there was such a difference? I don't know whether I would say um, it was strongly. It was thirty votes for the. Um, for the spec play versus 27 for the, um, well, I guess overall you might say, no, I, I don't know why the, um, why the adults felt stronger towards the um, spec play. Um, on the day we did have, um, the, the, there were the three companies had their own representatives there. And, you know, for all I can say, maybe the, um, the representatives you know, appeal to different age groups, um, you know, in the in their own way, and therefore we had a different result. But um, we, I personally can't speak to as to why they um, the the results were skewed. I don't know if um, Sheila or Dennis would like to add something to that. I should also note, though, before Sheila or Dennis jumps in, that um, the adults pretty much have been very, very vocal to this point about what they did or didn't like um, in regards to the design, the layout, picnic areas, restrooms, um, walking path. So we have heard um, the, the, the people that, that, that attend both meetings um, have been extremely um, strongly positioned and um, opined you know, in very specific ways about what they like and what they don't like about the park. So it was for no no lack of um, of reasoning in the overall design of the of the park, if not the playground. And I think just to follow up on what Nicholas said, I can't recall any specific uh, reasons as to why adults liked one or children liked one more than the other. Um, I think that you know um, our recommendation based upon the fact that um, that the Hags equipment um, is somewhat um, lower cost, and yet it still provides uh, enough value in terms of play features, as well as it was the one that seemed to be um, most um, preferred by children. You know, this is, there's no right answer on playground equipment. Um, and so if the commission feels differently about, um, about recommending one of the other um, options, that's certainly um, within your purview as well. And lastly, there was a letter, a member of the public that wrote in and was talked about graffiti and how this the park is frequently a source of graffiti, probably because it's so tucked away. Is there any um, 
determination or opinion or view from staff about if one uh, is more or less prone to graffiti or more or less problematic? I mean, based upon the fact that um, graffiti hits different playgrounds at different times, um, they seem to go through a bit of a cycle. And so we have gone months, if not years, in certain parks where we have not gotten any graffiti. And then within a two to three, four month period, we may have two or three outbreaks of graffiti. So there is no rhyme or reason about it. Um, so I would say simply from a, um, if it's really looking at the equipment, I don't believe that one set of equipment is, would be more graffiti prone than the other. Okay, thank you. No further questions. Okay. Um, I have just a couple, just a couple of questions. Um, one of them is if you could pull up the slide of the uh, HAG equipment, please. Um, in the top area, uh, I forget what you called it, but it's the, it's the square piece of the structure with the net in the middle. And I'm, I'm had, I puzzled over that picture for a while, and I, I don't understand how children use that for play. Well, Commissioner, um, I, I, Dennis, if you don't, I, I can I can answer it. I've okay. got a um, I've got a five and a seven year old. Um, yeah. My my five year old tends to try to. Um, there's something similar to this at um, Beresford and also at. Um, at another park in, uh, in, in Los Angeles. These um, kind of nets, um, because they have a little bit of movement to them, they provide a interesting and challenging way for children to go from one end to the other with their um, uh, you know, feet and hands sometimes falling through. So it gives them a bit of a challenge. And the fact that they kind of um, also uh, have some vertical movement um, when more than one child gets on there and they do that, it, it, it challenges them as to um, keep their balance and also make their way across. So it's kind of like a, you know, a bit of a, like a, a line walking or a trampoline type um, situation combined together. And the fact that um, more than one child can affect the, the balance, the movement of that, um, of that neck. Um, you know, creates for a lot of fun, at least from my child's perspective. Of course, he could be using it wrong like he does with so many other things. And I don't know um, if uh, Dennis wants to add anything different to that. No, you did it perfectly. Uh, okay, well, looking, looking at it, it was, it was um, easier to see in the materials that you, that you sent to us. Um, they, the, the gap between the squares, if you will, that the um, are made by the by the crosshatch of, of the lines of the net. Those spaces looked fairly large. Are are there any are there issues around children you know, going to step and falling and going through those gaps? It, does that present safety or other issues? Uh, I don't think so because there is a safety surfacing below it uh, and it's only like one foot off the ground. So, um, and I, I spoke with the um, representative today about, about that issue. And she, she basically mirrored what Nicholas said. Okay. All right. Well, thank, thank we you. Can, we can look into maybe tightening up the squares. I can talk to her about that a little bit. Okay, well, um, we could we could leave that with you. Um, the other thing is um, that I forget which one of you mentioned this in, in your presentation, but talking again about the Hags um, equipment, that you use Hags equipment elsewhere in the city. Is that did I hear that correctly? Yes. Um, and and I guess my question is, what's your experience with that equipment? Uh, in those other locations. <clears throat> it's been holding up from what we, I understand. Beresford is fairly recent, but the one at Casanova Park seems to be holding up. Um, and there's one at Parkside, Aquatic Park in a beach. We've had 
uh, uh, problems with other play equipment at Parkside Aquatic Park in the past holding up because of the salt water and the air. So we wanted to get more of a wood structure out there and it seems to be holding up. Okay, okay. Um, I, what, I'm, I'm curious, I mean, I'm thinking about what's there and, and I imagine that, that the existing equipment has got to be at least 50 years old. Um, what sort of a lifespan do you look for in, in this playground equipment and at either here or the, what we're looking at for Central Park? Well, ideally play equipment lasts versus play area. Play equipment will last maybe 20 years. Uh, then you start got to start thinking of replacing it. A lot of times we don't. We stretch it out to 25 to 30 because we don't have the budget for it. But uh, that's about the uh, average lifespan. The play area itself, uh, probably, you know, 30, 30 years. I don't know if you can get a change of play equipment in the same play area for one, one time and then go back and re renovate the play, play the whole play area later. But uh, uh, yeah, it's it's because, you know, the curbs start to crack and stuff like that after after 25 to 30 years and stuff. Yeah, OK. OK. And is did you see any significant differences across the three options in terms of the expected lifespan? Uh, no. OK. I, mean, I, I if I can just add, I think Dennis sure. is correct. I think we typically will hope to get 20 years um, out of play equipment. Um, we typically go longer um, than 20 years. I think one of the challenges after 20 years is that it becomes more challenging to find replacement parts um, for any piece of equipment. And this is sort of over manufacturers, um, whatever. I think it just becomes more challenging. So. Um, I think if we think we can get a good 20 years, we tend to stretch it. Um, and then at that point, we have a real challenge about finding replacement um, pieces. It, should it become damaged or um, through wear and tear? I, I would mention also that both the Hagues and the uh, lap set uh, and Berliner are, are um, from Europe. And, uh, but, the, but, there are storehouses that we checked on this and there's storehouses for replacement parts in the US. In fact, Miracle owns Hague, so. Okay, this seems to be the, the, the tenor of our times. Um, okay, uh, any other questions from the commission? Okay, hearing none, then I'm going to open the, uh, the public comment period. And uh, the same uh, co um, co uh, considerations apply to this as did the uh, public comment on Central Park. Uh, and that is to say uh, that we would like uh, uh, any members of the public who are, who are uh, dialed in uh, to uh, Raise your hands if you plan to uh, offer public comment on this on this matter. G Giovanna, do we have any? Yes, we do, Chair Massey. I'm just giving it a another minute or so. There's no oh, sure. yeah. worries. No worries. Okay, at this time we have four hands raised, starting with Kevin Milley. Okay, um, then I think we're, uh, in the interests of time, we're, we're going to uh, have a, a, a three minute time limit on the comments. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, could we uh, have the first one? Kevin, if you could please unmute yourself. Hi, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Perfect. 
So first and foremost, to say that Sheila and Nicholas understand the sentence, sentiments of the community would be an understatement. Um, you know, they came to us in the first meeting and Sheila and her team. We've lost you. Giovanna, we've lost him. Some, I'm back, somebody muted me. <laughs> I see. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, so after the first meeting, Sheila clearly grasped that the original designs were off mark with what the community wanted. She understood that East and West Hillsville parks are special and different. Um, and her and her team have done an outstanding job representing the feedback of the community that uses the park. And you know the incorporated changes that you just saw, I think were outstanding in, in listening to our feedback. Um, so just my feedback on the designs. I, I lean towards HAGS because of the results that I've seen at Bearsford. Um, it's incredibly used at Bearsford and it's in excellent condition. And I think it fits the aesthetics of the park well. Um, my son, as long as the other children in the community you saw preferred it. And I think it's because it allows for creativity for them. Um, they're used to seeing things like that. Uh, you know, my only comment for improvement would be for a larger sand space. Uh, the current park has significant sand space. Unfortunately, that's no longer a safe surface structure, um, but I think it's something that kids of all ages would enjoy. Um, and I think that the lower cost of the equipment is also a benefit for the community. All right, thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Uh, Giovanna, next. Next, we have, I'm sorry, our name is Francis Ripple. Dot for walls. Is the name on the screen? Is it you? Yes. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes. Perfect. I actually just wanted to echo what, what Kevin just said um, and thank Sheila and, and her team. I think um, taking our feedback, they did a fabulous job. The in-person meeting. Um, I do have to say, though, that the Ross um, equipment just wasn't presented well. Their uh, presentation wasn't um, didn't stand out and have as many details, although their product was better than the other two. So I, I, I would venture to say that that would have been the winning uh, equipment. However, they just didn't present well. So that's why the, the, the Hags um, seem to be the second best choice um, for our children. But I echo what, what Kevin said about the um, sand uh, portion. It is something that the kids really do enjoy. Um, understanding that it's not a safe surface, we, we just love if we can look at that um, and maybe increase the amount of space that's allocated to, to sand. Um, and then I wanted to go back to what, what Sarah um, had asked earlier about the washrooms or the bathrooms um, and, and, and just wanted to remind everyone that, that the sentiment was that it's a, it's a hidden park. Um, and, and people within kind of, you know, a two block radius use the park and can often just, just run home if they need to. So we would like to keep it that way and, and do prefer that, that there will not be a bathroom there. That's it. Thank, thank you so much, Sheila and team. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, Giovanna, the next one. Yes, next we have Annie Schultzman. If you can please unmute yourself. Yes, I'm here. Hello, um, commissioners and, um, and uh, director Sheila and everyone else. Um, I um, live very close to the park and I sent a letter today and I just, you know, um, I don't wanna reiterate every point, but um, I really liked um, the other, the equipment that was not, um, that you, it looks like you don't plan to accept, which was the specified um, play equipment. I thought that that was um, a more natural looking one. And I thought that that would be less prone to vandalism and um, tagging of graffiti because it had less large surface area. And it looked like it was more a net, more natural look for our park. And um, so I'm disappointed that um, you're um, taking the word, you know, you, you look, you're giving more weight to the children and it's the adult, adults that pay the taxes and know what's best for their children. And so I'm, I'm very disappointed that you're not going back to the, um, to the people that make you know the specified 
play equipment and asking them to scale down the equipment and um, have fewer elements of, um, presented to us and make it work because they were the clear winners in this, in this boat. And um, the, you know, it's uh, the far more parents like that, um, like those play structures. And um, the parents are really the ones that know best and kids, kids are fickle and they, you know, change their minds and, you know, you can take them to another play structure. We live here, we, we, this is our home. I've been here 27 years. And so I feel like, um, you, you know, you're not considering our, the voice of the people, you know, that you, why did we have, if it was, if the play equipment was more expensive and you were going to, you're going to turn it down Ning, because of um, the cost, just go back to that vendor, um, specified play equipment and ask them to give a scaled down version and to cut their costs. Um, it, it, they, you don't have to have all those elements to make it work. And um, we are surrounded by houses on all sides of the park. And um, so that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, a restroom is not always necessary, is not needed. And also we, li we are literally one block away from the Hillsdale Mall where there, there, it, there are public restrooms. And um, I'm going to have to ask you to wrap up, please. Okay. Well, um, I I just want to say that I would like to see the the play equipment um, more spread out throughout the park because I don't want um, the noise and the traffic to be more impacted for for the, um, Hickory and Briar Lane, and I live on Briar. And we have a lot of traffic here. And it, if it was spread out, it would be more equal to the neighborhood. Okay. And Thank please you. read my letter that I sent. Uh, we did read your letter. Every member of the commission reads every public comment that is put in and, and public comments are, are very much taken into account in our decision-making. Thank you very much for your, for your comments. Uh, do, Giovanna, do we have one more? Yes, we do, Chair Massey. David Brownman, if you could please unmute yourself. Hello there. Thank you for having us on uh, the call. Um, we're recent residents, so we weren't involved in some of the planning efforts, but it seems like uh, the people involved have done a very good job um, considering the different options. Um, I really like the fact that kids were consulted uh, in the playground as the main people playing on them. They have a lot of very valuable input there. Um, our only feedback on the designs that we saw would it be nice to have uh, a better ratio of swings. I know we talked about that was kind of a configurable option. Um, so just looking at more uh, kind of teenager and adult size swings versus the, the tot or baby swings. Um, I, we find that children grow out of the baby swings pretty soon. Um, and in my experience, there has not been, you know, too many babies in the park at one time to use the available baby swings. Uh, and so having more kind of general purpose swings available, I think would be nice. Uh, that's all. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your comments. Uh, Giovanna, do we have any other requests for uh, public comment? Yes, we do, Trinasi. Uh, Drew has just raised his hand. Uh, then then let's, let's put him on. Okay. Drew, if you can please unmute yourself. Hello. Uh, I'll try to keep this quite short. Um, my comments less about the park itself. I have been in this park. I've walked this park uh, numerous times. I'm probably outside the half mile radius. Um, so my comments more about just, I don't know that I have missed a meeting notice for some of this, but I very much could, uh, may have, but just maybe these kind of meetings, maybe we could be copy the park and recs email list. I'm trying to leverage things that already exist than creating a new one because I would have loved to know about these meetings. I don't know that I would have gone for say, um, but just my comments more about even parks on the other side of the city. I, I come to these meetings regularly. 
I would just love to know they're happening and what's going on in case I could show up or just follow. It's I'm not a strong voice when I don't live in that part of the city, but I am curious about things and stuff. So my comments more about just broad broadening the noticing. Um, I don't mean mailers. I'm just trying to leverage some email infrastructure that already exists or something, but uh, without being an exceptional one-off type situation. So that's my comment. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much for your comment. Uh, Giovanna, do we have anyone else? No, Chair Massey, there are no additional hands raised at this time. Okay, then at this time, uh, I'll close the, uh, the public comment period and bring it back to the commission for comments. Um, Heather, why don't we start with you? Sure. Um, let's see where to start. I already talked about the swing orientation. I do um, hear the, the public comment about the ratio um, that, you know, <laughs> In my personal experience, my toddler wanted to stay in the baby swing longer than I wanted him to be in it. It became quite a challenge to get him in and out. So actually having fewer is not a bad thing to sort of redirect them to older swings. Um, so I, I think I think what maybe we heard was that when we get to the stage of what exactly swings go in, we may want to get um, some feedback on that. Um, I... I like that we listened to the kids. I also don't see a huge difference between 30 people and 27 people overall um, to say that, you know, the one was overly um, the clear winner. Um, I, I think to take the point of kind of making the equipment natural, if that, if that was, you know, more of the sentiment of the neighborhood, I was asking about the colors on the hags, because I think that's maybe one way to do that is to not have it um, be so brightly colored. Although since we don't know why the kids voted for it, maybe they loved um, the colors. So it, it, again, it kind of, I don't know what the next, phase of this is and what the next outreach or um, if there is any more public feedback on the specific elements as we drill down. Um, but it does seem like maybe there's one more one more opportunity to get a little bit more on, on some of the reasoning, not necessarily the reasoning, but you know, like the swing configuration, what colors they're wanting to see in the park and that sort of thing. Um, I, I do, uh, I am in favor of um, cost savings. We have a lot of parks. We have a lot of um, things that we need to do with a very small budget. So I do like that that is a consideration for this park that we are, you know, not losing quality, but also trying to save some cost here, costs on that. Um, I think, yes, that's that's all of my comments. Thank you. I, I think, I, I mean, overall, I, I, I think that you have done an outstanding job on this and really going back to the community several times is, is just, um, is, is very good. Very good public service. Thank you. Uh, but before we before we move on and, and get everybody else's comments, uh, my understanding is that Sheila is looking for us to, um, express a view as to which of the three uh, vendors you would you would support. Um, sure. But sure. so if if you would if you have if you have an opinion an opinion on, on that if, if I think it would be helpful if, if each of us could express that. Sure. Uh, I agree with the staff's recommendation here. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Sarah? Yeah, um, I, I want to just say thank you to Sheila and to the team. Um, it, it's clear the outreach was effective and thank you to everyone who spoke on, on public comment. Um, I also agree with the staff recommendation um, and don't have any further comment beyond that. Thank you. Okay, okay. Um, Lindsay? Thanks for this, I would agree as well. Okay, uh, Eric? Uh, I will first I'd like to thank the public that called in the public comments. We do always read the emails. Um, 
as a commission that does not get a lot of public comment, we typically really like it when the public comes to our meetings. So thank you to those that called in and, and Drew, you're, you're always, uh, a, I appreciate your comments about notification and we appreciate that you are frequently a, a um, visitor to our meetings and a commenter because we always have some interesting things to say and we appreciate it. Um, between the two designs, I actually, I'm torn. I actually kind of lean towards the, the more natural one, the, the first one. Um, so I, I, I really like the, the incorporation of some of the naturalistic aspects and the sort of the log walk and, and other, other things playing sort of through the sort of faux trees. Uh, and so I'm kind of giving these comments to um, Sheila and Nicholas for, for maybe future, um, future parks to maybe continue to explore these, um, these features. Um, Cause I do think that there's a, a nice, um, sort of pathway of play through there. Uh, I also liked that there was a monkey bars for little kids at a, at a different height to sort of train the kids to do the monkey bars because oftentimes when they're the big monkey bars, they're, they're really daunting for the kids. Um, I thought that Commissioner Walnick's um, comment on swings was like beyond insightful that I had never thought about. Uh, and it, she blew my mind with that comment and I agree wholeheartedly. So I appreciate her making that comment. Get through um, your and, second kid and you'll uh, you'll understand how you're ready to be done lifting a minute out of swing. Well, actually, not the lifting, but oh, oh, the, oh, the, oh, placement, sorry. the placement <laughs> of the like the view of the expanse. And so um, I I like um, in the um, in the the miracle one or the um, the hag one that the um, so let me get to the page where they call them out. Um, the um, swingo and the spinner, the, the, the sort of merry-go-round, new version of a merry-go-round. Um, and the tango seed, I think, is something that's pretty cool. Um, similar to Mr. Held and Walnick's comments about the, the kitty seat abundance, I think I would recommend looking at, instead of the duplicate mirage swing seats, maybe getting a one of the... Um, the large disc swings that they have that are considered accessible that kids can sit on um, that are, you know, can, their parents can lift them if they're wheelchair bound and they're not quite a, a seat. They're more that you can lay on because you can also sit on those with a parent can sit on them with a child as well. Um, and I know Miracle provides them and um, those are nice, nice swings. I think overall the, the Miracle structure uh, I think it's probably cheaper because it doesn't feel like there's a lot of there there to me. Um, it's it's primarily a lot of the little distractions, the, the small little things that the, the little um, letter games and and the crosses and the sorting game and and those the way I've seen kids interact is they sort of drive by them and they they hit them and then they don't really play with them that much. So it feels like there's not a lot there, uh, and I think that the slides are both um essentially the same slide so that for kids like i know when i take my daughter to the park she wants to to go down the different types of slides so she wants to go down the straight one then she wants to go down the corkscrew one and the long one or the fast one and so i'd like to see if you could tweak it by just maybe changing one of the slides to have slide variety um but i or even um the thing um, sticking out number 10, the tornado spinner um, could maybe be a slide in that station rather than the spinner to give you more um, slide options. Cause it, it seems that slides are always sort of like the, the main attraction of the playgrounds. Uh, and so um, I'm always, I always like the playgrounds that have a lot of slides in them. Uh, and I do go down all of them because I'm forced to. Um, and uh, I didn't, um, that's my comment, Nicholas, earlier, my question about the, 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 the third one not being in the package. So I don't, didn't get enough views to really look at and have any pros or cons of it. Um, but um, I, and also I do like the, um, the, the, the net landing pad in the, the Miracle one that, that uh, Chair Massey was asking about. Um, and that things I typically I find are, are hard for some kids, but it, it, the placement in here is kind of a nice placement where it's down low and it's not as um, 
for boating and, and it does help develop agility play and and balance and so I think those are some some nice features of it. Um, I'm heartened that there was public comment that they overall are, are pleased with the process and the outreach. Uh, this is really truly kind of this is hidden hidden park and so I'm glad that the, the residents feel um, that that they had input and I'm I'm you know as I indicated I'm torn between the two designs and I'm, it's it's interesting that the different weighting were of adults liking one and the kids liking the other and I don't really know how to process that so I I kind of have no I'm sort of split in the middle but that's that's my feedback for you and that's it thanks okay oh that that's that's great okay um now I have I've gotten everybody in yes yes okay good um all right uh I support the staff recommendation um I attended the the second meeting the outdoor one in the park uh and uh one I wanted to thank uh Sheila and uh the, the staff people who were there who uh ran I thought a very effective meeting with a a very um, uh, animated and engaged uh, group of the local residents. Um, I thought that was that was very effective. Um, I preferred these the, the uh, Hags equipment, I guess, because to me it it looked more like conventional playground equipment and uh, I shared the sentiment that was uh, expressed uh, during the public meetings of wanting the park to look um, within reason uh, much the way that it does now and that that includes the placement uh, I thought that uh, the, the the placement that was that was settled on for the equipment um, is what we should be doing there. Uh, the as someone pointed out, the lawn area uh, in the park is extensively used for play um, by adults, children, um, and to spread the equipment out uh, makes the lawn area uh, less usable. And I think we have the park has basically operated with the uh, with most of the equipment uh, fairly centralized uh, for a long time. And I think that if this layout represents uh, the most efficient use of the space. Um, I think that uh, consideration should be given to changing the ratio on, on the swings. Uh, somebody wrote a letter into us actually about Central Park. And in a, in a, from a different perspective, I guess, um, suggested the same thing, and that is wanting more older child swings and um, kind of as a reminder to us that uh, the parks serve uh, a wider age group than we sometimes look at. If you look at these, both these playground uh, proposals that we've looked at tonight, um, they kind of stop at age 12. And you have a, a, a group that still really fits under the rubric of children as in not adult, um, but is older than 12. And I think Older child swings are uh, something that can, uh, at least to some extent, uh, address the needs and desires of that group. Um, I agree with Commissioner uh, Holm about the slides. I think that uh, more variety of slides uh, would be a positive thing in particular, uh, including uh, at least one corkscrew slide. Uh, the children seem to really go for that. Uh, I also agree with uh, Commissioner Walnick uh, uh, about her very perceptive comment around the swings, that the swings should face, should be placed next to each other, which is the way the swings are now. Um, and that I think 
children do very much um, take in the view and take in the idea that they're going up in the air and they see sort of the world around them as opposed to seeing the swing set and the child in, in, in front of them. So um, I, I would encourage um, whichever we end up using um, that the swings should be oriented in that manner. Um, I don't really have any other comments on this other than to reiterate, I support the staff recommendation. Uh, before we get off of this issue, um, are there any other final comments from the commissioners? Okay, seeing none. Sorry, I, I have a question. Uh, absolutely. Could you just um, run through the next steps um, for the for the park, for the design project? So I think a couple things. Um, we're in the process right now of getting a um, topographical survey of the park because there have been some concerns raised by the neighbors about drainage. And so we really don't know what the fix is until we know what the problem is. Um, and so we'll be engaging on that. Um, and then once we have that information, we'll be looking for an architect, landscape architectural firm to then start on the construction drawings. Um, I don't know how much more um, specific outreach that we will need or want to do in terms of a community meeting. We might just want to send a survey out when we get to the point of asking about swings or colors or whatever. But typically those, that level of design does not raise itself to having another full-blown community meeting on it. But I certainly think that we um, can send you know, um, notices out and try to get feedback through some sort of community survey. Yeah, I, I think we can also use this the next time it would come before the commission, if there, there's a plan for that. Um, we could just, you know, maybe take the comment of a broader notification that it's going to be before the commission um, so that people could just come here and give the feedback. That might be a way to kind of consolidate that rather than doing a whole nother separate um, community meeting. Yeah, based upon the level of improvements, I don't know that this would necessarily come back to the commission unless okay. we find that there is a real design issue in terms of the layout of the pathway or whatever that changes the configuration. Um, I'm just going off of the kind of processes that we've used in the past. Okay, I guess I have just a couple of, of things before we before we let this go. Um, one of them is, uh, is it part of the um, overall plan for the park to replace the lawn? And I understand that what might replace the lawn is not necessarily finally decided, but the lawn, but that the lawn would be replaced in one way or another. I think that we'll wait to see. Um, I suspect that when we start taking out those individual pieces of equipment that are spread out throughout the park, that there will be some damage done to the existing lawn. That's really a design and construction detail that I'm not sure we're able to fully anticipate at this point. Um, but I think our expectation is, is that we would go back um, within the existing footprint of the lawn with with more with it with new turf, whether it's renovating the existing or putting all new in, that's just going to have to wait to be seen. Okay, that's fine. And and the other question is around: Do you have any sense of timetable? Well, I think that we once we get the um, the topographical survey, we'll be able to better uh, understand where the drainage con um, concerns are. And then I think we'll be going out and um, looking to hire a landscape architect firm to then do the construction drawings. Um, so hopefully that can happen within the next few months. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Well, uh, please please keep please keep us posted on the progress of this. We uh, certainly will. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much, and and thank you very much for for your, all your efforts around uh, taking us to this point. Uh, with this park. Uh, so we'll um, leave this issue and move on to the last issue of the night, which is the proposed parks and recreation fee schedule 
for fiscal years to 2022, 23. And uh, I understand the business manager will be making a short presentation on this. I just Nicholas, unmuted myself. Ready. Yes, I know. Thank you so much. Good evening again, uh, commissioners um, and members of the public. I'll, um, so I'll just um, refresh your memories and um, Commissioner Fields, I don't think you've been through a fee schedule before. So I'll just um, let you know um, the process. So every year, basically, um, there's an opportunity for our fees to be adjusted based on the cost of living. Um, which is a percentage that is calculated around the end of the year. Finance provides us with this um, CPI number, the percentage number. And, and um, generally, as long as the increase is within that uh, percentage number, no explanation needs to be given um, in regards to the increase because you're just keeping up with the cost of living. Um, where there are new fees or where we have increased a fee to a number that's higher than the CPI or the COLA, then we have to provide an explanation. Um, last year, um, the cost of living at the COLA was um, calculated to be 1.2%, which was historically low, whereas this year we are at 3.8, which is a total um, inverse to what it was last year. Um, as such, we have made um, some changes to our fees within the 3.8%, um, the, the CPI, and we have made some changes that are um, pertaining to new fees from parks, recreation, and golf. And um, I'll speak to those in a minute. I've got a slide to share for illustration purposes, so just bear with me a moment. Okay, so as you can see, here is the, the, the bullet points. So um, the fee schedule updates for this year have been, uh, have seen very minor fee increases to certain picnic areas. Um, again, that's within the um, expected range. Um, recreation, um, we've got new facility rental fees and largely the driver here is that we have, um, we are trying to um, charge appropriately where commercial use is in play. So for instance, where a um, somebody who runs an academy for say martial arts, outdoor um, yoga classes, whatever that may be, um, leagues um, and the like, we are um, creating a new class of fees for where the commercial use is in play. So, and by commercial, the difference is that um, if it is somebody like say a private citizen or a community group, in that case, we expect a, a one set of fees to apply or a set of fees to apply where the, when there is a commercial use, which also extracts a higher profit margin, we are changing our fees to reflect that it is now a commercial use. Um, Regarding King Gymnasium, there used to be um, two fees that people used to have to pay when they use the gymnasium, usually. So what we've done is for the gym and the room adjacent, whereas now what we've done is we've created a consolidated fee for the two complementary fees to be encapsulated in the one fee. Um, again, it's nothing, um, it's not, it's not a, um, this is just the consolidation as opposed to a, a higher charge or anything of the sort. Um, for the parks, um, uh, for the parks department, there is a temporary park access fee, and this relates to a permit for when people, third party operators usually have to access our parks in order to conduct um, access uh, private property or equipment. So in that case, um, there's a, a hundred dollar fee to issue a temporary permit for somebody to maybe drive a truck through a park in order to access equipment or, or to do work to a private property or equipment. Um, the, instance, the instance of these permits is 
likely to be very low, no, not more than a handful a year. However, just so that we have um, visibility of them and also for us to have the awareness and maybe um, seek out things like insurance if necessary, the, the, the permit will basically bring those operators into view for us so that way we have um, awareness and visibility. Um, Golf has done minor adjustments to certain player categories. And what is a major change this year is that um, we aren't going to be changing the park and loo fees, which are the fees that are associated with subdivisions or building additional um, housing units onto a property. Um, these can impact uh, housing creation um, very much because for a duplex, I believe currently the price, the, the fee is $27,000 just as a um, case in point. And if there was to be an increase because of it's already substantial, it would um, impact um, those housing creation. However, this year, because there is an ongoing study, they are going to remain the same. So therefore there's gonna be no changes there. Um, usually this is one that, um, attracts a lot of attention because of the fact that the fees are um, in the tens of thousands. Um, and that's basically the, um, the updates um, in a uh, short and a brief manner. Um, we've yeah, attached the fee schedule along with the packet and we've um, noted which are new and which have increased in the column furthest to the right. So that way you can see which ones have been um, have been increased and which ones have remained the same, indicated by an NC for no change. Okay, thank you very much for that informative presentation. Uh, at this point, I'll open this up to uh, <clears throat> questions from the commission. Uh, Eric, why don't you start? Okay. Um, for the business fees you talked about, or or you know entities that are that are running a, a business, is that the um, facility rental camper clinic fee? Is that that zone that you're talking about? Yes, yes. Okay. And um, I should also note that Bob Palacio is also online. He's the uh, um, community services manager, and he can speak in in detail if needed as well. But that is the area that we were talking about, Commissioner. Okay. And in that same area, right before the camper clinic fees, there's a weekend and half day and a weekend holiday full day. That That's for renting a field. So like if I wanna have a soccer game with my friends and wanna rent the field, that's what, that's what that would be? Correct. Okay. Good, and good evening, Commissioners. Bob Palacio, Community Services Manager. I'm just here you know, in the event, do you have some specific questions like Commissioner Holm was asking? So I can uh, I can be of help to you guys. I, I Commissioner Holm, I, I, I want to give you just one real quick example. So as far as the commercial fees, whether they're on a, on a soccer field or a softball or baseball diamond, what we were finding is that groups were coming in, uh, commercial groups, and you know they could be charging five hundred dollars a kid for a week long camp, uh, and they get you know 30, 40 kids out there, and they're making you know a ton of money. And they could literally be paying us you know, between twenty and, and forty dollars a day, uh, and and so it was sort of out of whack. And so we wanted to make sure that we weren't hurting, you know, just sort of the individual citizens who were coming out and wanted to rent a field, uh, or um, you know, our, our leagues like Little League or or you know, Little Girls Softball or or any of our you know um, soccer groups um, that have volunteer coaches and and are providing a service to the, to the city. They're they're uh, fees remain the same. This was strictly for the, the commercial groups that were basically running businesses where they were making you know, pretty high profits and weren't really paying uh, anything for the city to do so. Okay. Um, and then for some of the fees, it looked like we had some that were um, more than the, the 3%, but then even I saw one that looked like it was a 50% fee increase. Um, and I noticed that in the, in the staff report, it said, um, you know, if you guys exceeded 20% that that had to go to both the commission and city council. Uh, so is that the intent for these, these few that are 
that are above 20% of an increase? Would you um, share one of those, um, Commissioner? Because um, we, we um, a number of us went through the fees and there shouldn't be anything that is um, over, well, the ones that did change, we should have noted them and if they are, 50% higher, then um, there would be good reason for it. But I, I can't think of any that are that high. So the weekend and half day was 20 and it went to 30. So it's a $10, $10 increase on a $20 fee. Um, the San Mateo High School gym rentals, the gym went from 75 to 100. So it's a $25 increase on a $75 fee. Um, And then one that's at 20% is the Beresford Shelter. It went from 200 to 220. I guess that's 10%. Um, so that's a 10% increase. So yeah, I, I, can, I can speak to that, Commissioner Holmes. So um, what we did when we looked at all of these fees, we were, we were pretty detailed about looking at all of the cities that surrounded us and what their fees were. We also looked at, at how often our facilities were being rented. So what, you know, what the, the, you know, request was or need for the, these these facilities. When it when we looked at the San Mateo High School gym, um, the we're not the only ones that actually rent that gym. The district also rents the gym, and I believe they charge like around 175 an hour. So we were way out of line with what uh, if someone went through them and 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 went through us. And so that was an attempt to get more in line for a facility that. Uh, is a really nice new facility with a really large space. Uh, it's still beneath what, um, you know, way beneath what the district is charging as well as um, neighboring cities with, with light uh, facilities. So, you know, when, when we did any of these increases that went above the COLA, they generally were to keep us somewhere in line with neighboring cities. However, we were still uh, underneath our facilities um, by and large our um, you know, are, are priced, um, you know, really beneath uh, what, what the going market rate is for, for similar facilities in other cities. So we had to make sort of an attempt to, to get more in line. Um, and, you know, with this year kind of having the higher COLA, um, we, tried to, we tried to do it where, where we thought it was, uh, it was smart to do and, and not really, again, hit, hit the, uh, the groups that were more of the sort of volunteer type um, you know, associations and, and leagues and, and folks that are providing service. And to answer the second part of your commissioner, uh, the second part of your question, commissioner, yes, um, all these fees are substantially going to go to city council, um, I believe, in May, in the similar format that you have them um, at the moment, and with the same explanations that you are seeing. So the the process is that they come to you first. Um, in case you have any questions or, or suggestions. And then after that, we submit them um, with your endorsement to City Council for um, broader review. Okay. And what's our relationship with San Francisco High School and their gym? Did we help them pay it, build it? I can't remember. Or, or do we have certain hours and they have certain hours? Yeah, we, we actually have uh, have an agreement that I believe will be up in 2026-ish. Uh, it's been a long time agreement with the city and the district. We uh, put up uh, roughly $8 million to help build that gym um, a number of years ago. And so we have a, we have a joint use agreement with them and we use it during uh, out of school time to make sure that the community has access to it. Uh, and that, you know, when the school is in session, um, when they have their high school practices, things like that, we work um, jointly with the district to, to make sure it's available to them. So it, it gets maximum use that way. I think it's a, a, a good deal for both sides. Um, and the, the only issue is that they have their set fees that they set with their district and we have our fees. And, and this, you know, for us, it's more of an attempt to, to kind of keep in line with, um, you know, with where they're at as well as the going rate for similar facilities uh, on the peninsula. Okay, thank you. No further questions. Okay, uh, Heather. Uh, I don't have any questions, thanks. Okay, um, uh, Lindsay. No questions, thank you. Okay, Sarah. Two hopefully easy questions. 
Um, the first is I didn't see anything about recreational class fees. Does that mean that there's no change for the cost of those classes? So I can maybe address that. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, we, um, I, want, I don't even know how many years ago, but um, recreation fee, recreation classes are set differently in terms of the fees based Great. upon a cost recovery plan. Okay. And so those fees um, have not for many years come to the commission. Great. Okay. And then my other question is what is the timeline for the study on the in lieu fees? So I think we came to the commission last year on just on the general framework um, about park in lieu fees and moving from a in lieu fee to a park impact fee. Um, and so I think there was commission consensus around that as well as uh, making some new applications for commercial fees mm -hmm. or commercial um, projects as well. So I think the basic framework was there. Um, we did, there was a, a number of questions about our current um, credit system and how we um, assign credits. And so we currently have a consultant doing that work for us right now. And so we hope to bring that back to the commission in early summer. With their, with their recommendations, particularly around the credit system. And, and then all of that will then move forward to the city council after the commission's reviewed it. Great, thank you. Okay, um, Sarah? I have no further questions. Okay, um, well, <clears throat> what is, I want to, uh, Thank you all for the the uh, the presentation uh, was all I think very understandable this year uh, perhaps <clears throat> in large part because we didn't delve into park in Luffy's this year um, I I support your recommendations I'm particularly um, happy to see uh, both the fees on commercial use of our facilities. Uh, that strikes me as as something that's uh, that's overdue. I guess I didn't realize we weren't doing something like that, and I, I should have. I've been doing this long enough. Uh, in any event, I I very much endorse that, and I also endorse the uh, the temporary park access fees less for whatever money we might make from it um, than from the standpoint of allowing. <clears throat> Our, our park and, and recreation department to uh, to to know who is entering our parks and doing work on private property or or equipment. Uh, I, I very much support the aspect of bringing those those third parties in and and making uh, requiring them to make themselves known to the city. And I'd be interested in follow up. Uh, when you've had an opportunity to assess whatever uh, needs there may be for insurance or, or other um, liability protections with respect to this kind of activity. Um, so overall, I, I'm, I'm in favor and appreciate the, the work that, that goes into doing this every year. Um, okay. Um, at this point, we've asked if we've had everybody's questions, we will um, open the issue for public comment. Giovanna, do we have anyone wanting to comment on this issue? I do not see any hands raised, Chair Massey, at this time. Okay, then I'm going to close the public comment period and ask for any final comments from commissioners. Well, hearing none, um, then I uh, will have us move on from this to uh, reports and announcements. Uh, do, do we need to all make a recommendation for this? Oh, I'm yes. right. You're yes, right. You do. Sheila, you told me about this, and of course, I didn't remember. Yes, I've, we actually have to have a vote on this, as I recall. Yes, Sheila? You want to vote? Sorry, someone just needs to make a motion and then a oh. second and then just go through the- um, yeah, I move problem. to approve okay. the fee schedule update. I'll second. 
Uh, okay, Giovanna, could we do a roll call vote? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, see. <clears throat> Commissioner Fields? Yes. Commissioner Holmes? Yes. Commissioner Roman? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Chair Massey? Uh, yes. Motion has passed. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> now, now we're done. Uh, now we can move on to reports and announcements. Uh, Sheila, the floor is yours. So I just have um, one announcement. Um, at this uh, point, the city council has decided that they're going to go back to in-person meetings starting with their first meeting in April. Um, and so that does mean that most likely the commission meeting in May will be an in-person meeting. Um, the specifics as to um, does everybody have to show up? Is everybody um, wearing masks or not um, is still to be decided. Um, I can say that there is going to be an effort to make sure that the public input um, continues to remain both a virtual option as well as having people show up in public or in person. Um, but what it means in terms of the number of commissioners who needs to be on site, et cetera, those details are still being worked out right now um, between the city clerk's office and the city manager's office. But I did want to let you know that it looks like the first your meeting in May uh, will be an in-person meeting. Okay. And I don't have any um, further announcements at this point. Okay. Um, <clears throat> any anything from commissioners? I would like to um, invite my fellow commissioners um, to a, a bike ride, a community bike ride on March 20th. We're meeting at Beresford Park um, at 10 a.m. and we'll be riding um, to Central Park and back. And uh, I hope that everyone can join us. Oh, and uh, I'm happy to send out a flyer with that in writing if people would like to have that. Yes, please do. Sure. Okay, thank, thank you. Any, anything from anybody else? Okay, well, thank you all for uh, your patience and um, attention and participation in, in this meeting, which may have set a record, I don't know, for, for length. Um, but uh, thank you all very much and we'll see you next month. We're adjourned. Thank you all. All right. Thank you. Good night. Good night.